Over the last five years, I can confidently say that I have transformed my lawn into the best looking lawn in my neighborhood. And today, I want to help you do the same. With all the different information you can find on Google and YouTube, it's easy to get confused over what products to buy, what information to listen to, and what will actually work on your lawn. Over the years, I've suffered many defeats, dealt with a lot of frustration, and have spent a lot of money on different fertilizers, products, and things that I thought were gonna magically transform my lawn overnight. You spent how much on the lawn? Today, I'm here to save you from that domestic violence call and show you that lawn care can be a lot easier than most people make it out to be. And the most important step begins right now, at the beginning of spring. For those of you that have a spring, because Minnesota Springs start way later than everybody else's, I decided to take a trip down to one of my subscribers' lawns that actually has a spring. Meet Sam. Hey, I'm Sam. Sam has a great looking lawn here in Iowa and was awesome enough to let me borrow it for the video. He keeps his front lawn at three quarters of an inch and it looks absolutely awesome once the weather really starts to warm up. So now that spring is here, how are we gonna game plan for the year ahead to get our lawn looking as great as possible? This is one of the most common questions that I receive in emails, and to be honest, it's really hard to answer this question without knowing exactly what's going on in your specific lawn. And there's only one way to figure this out, by doing a soil test. No, it's actually not, so please just hear me out. Soil tests are a 100% game changer for your lawn. Without doing a soil test, you are completely setting yourself up for disappointment along with wasting hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. How do you know what to put on your lawn if you actually don't know what your lawn needs? Soil tests are gonna tell you what products your lawn actually needs to thrive. Every professional stadium and golf course knows exactly what's going on in their soil so they can maintain it correctly and our lawn should be treated no differently, especially if you want outstanding results. So today I'm gonna show you a couple of different places where you can get a soil test done exactly how to do a soil test, and what the most important things are to look at once you get your results back. Also, I'm gonna be giving away this Vara Morris tree watering tool to one lucky viewer. So make sure you watch till the very end of the video to find out how to win. So first off, what is a soil test? Basically, a soil test is taking multiple samples of your lawn soil from various areas of your lawn, mixing it all together, and then sending it off to a lab to receive back a list of nutrient values that your lawn is composed of. It'll let you know things like what your pH is, what your phosphorus and potassium levels are, along with micronutrients like iron, magnesium, calcium, etc. It's extremely important to know these things because every single lawn is going to have different levels of these nutrients, which is ultimately going to affect how well your grass grows. Fertilizers are made of different amounts of macronutrients and micronutrients, so choosing what fertilizer you should use is definitely going to be based on your soil test results more than anything. We'll talk more about this later in the video. So now that I've finally convinced you to do a soil test, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do one at home and what your various options are for sending in your soil. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is buy a soil probe to get your samples. These things are ridiculously priced just like everything else right now, but if you buy a decent one right away, this should be able to last you the rest of your life. Plus, I'm sure you can find plenty of other uses for it around the house. If you really don't want to buy a soil probe, you can get away with digging up the samples with a garden trowel or a spade, but a soil probe is going to make your life a lot easier, especially if you're doing it year after year. It's up to you how you want to do it, we just need to find a way to get the dirt out of the ground. Aw, oh, dude. I just broke your trowel. <laughs> this is why you want to use a soil probe. Sorry, dude. The soil probe that I'm using today is a Vara Morris soil probe. It's one of the better priced probes that I found on Amazon for the size, and the reviews on this thing were great. It's made of stainless steel, so it shouldn't bend or dent unless you're really beating this thing up. And they're also a small American company, which is another thing that I love to support. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to pick one up. Now let's go actually collect some samples. What you're gonna wanna do is go around to about eight to 10 different areas in your lawn and stick this probe down to about four to six inches in the ground. You can mark the probe with a marker at the six inch mark. That way, once you hit the mark on the probe, you know you're at six inches and you can pull it out. That's what she said. 
When you pull out the probe, you'll notice that a core will be stuck within the probe. All you have to do is push this out, break off the bottom inch, and then place it into a clean bucket. I'd recommend wearing gloves while doing this so you don't contaminate anything in your sample. Once you go around to those eight to 10 spots, you should have enough soil for your sample. After you collect your sample, you're gonna to wanna to break up all the chunks of soil and make sure there are no sticks, rocks, roots, or other debris in your soil that could potentially contaminate the sample. But now that you have your sample, what are we gonna do with it? Well, we have a couple of options when it comes to this. The first option is to bag it up in a Ziploc bag and send it to a local university or egg testing location. The one I usually use is Waypoint Analytical. They have very fast results and are reasonably priced. Their S3M test is right around $20, which includes everything listed here. All you have to do is fill out this form and ship it along with the soil sample to this address. Or you can send it to the closest Waypoint location to you. There are multiple locations around the country. After Waypoint receives and tests your soil, they'll give you a call to collect payment and then email you the results almost immediately after that. The second option is to do a RX soil test kit like we're doing today. This test is exactly the same as the Waypoint analytical test as it's sent directly to Waypoint and will test for the same exact nutrients. The difference is that this kit basically does all the extra work for you. The kit includes some simple instructions along with the bag that you'll need to fill the sample with. The package also contains a pre-labeled box with free shipping so you don't have to worry about going to the post office and actually mailing off your sample. So if you want the convenience of just collecting your sample and putting it right in the mail, this is probably the test for you. I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanna purchase this test along with a 10% off promo code. Once you receive your results, you may feel a little overwhelmed looking at all the numbers, but I can break this down pretty simply for you. The most important number you're gonna to wanna to look at first is your pH. Your pH is gonna tell you the availability of nutrients to your grass. Optimally, you're gonna want your pH to be right in that six to seven range. Anything below or above that, and you're gonna have nutrients that are locked up in the soil. Meaning even if those nutrients are sitting in the soil, the grass is gonna have a hard time uptaking it. Which also means you are gonna be throwing away money when you put down amendments in the lawn because the grass cannot use all of it. The soil test will give you recommendations on how to raise or lower that pH number in your results. Just be aware though, this isn't gonna be an overnight fix. It's gonna take multiple seasons and multiple applications to get your pH close to where you want it. But in the long run, it'll be totally worth it once you start moving that number. The next two nutrients we're gonna look at is your phosphorus and potassium. Those two nutrients are part of what we call macronutrients. They're called macronutrients because they are required in large amounts for the plant to grow. When you look at a bag of fertilizer, these are the second and third numbers when you look at the bag. If you're low in any of those nutrients, you're gonna to wanna to find fertilizers that have higher numbers of those nutrients in the bag. If you're high in those nutrients, you're gonna to wanna to stay away from fertilizers that have those nutrients in them. It's pretty simple stuff. Nitrogen is also a macronutrient, but because of how much that number fluctuates within the soil, egg testing companies sometimes do not put that in the results. You're better off sticking to pounds of nitrogen per year depending on your grass type. Here's a chart so you can see how many pounds of nitrogen you should be dropping on your lawn per thousand square feet per year. Remember, this is pounds of actual nitrogen, not pounds of fertilizer. Now the rest of the numbers you're going to see are micronutrients. Micronutrients are needed in much smaller amounts, but they are still very important to the growth of your grass. Their absence or deficiency can severely affect plant growth, development, or even cause it to die in extreme cases. So definitely don't overlook micronutrients just because there's micro in the name. And speaking of micronutrients, there are a few that are very important to get your grass super dark green. If you wanna find out how I get the darkest green lawn in my neighborhood, check out this video right here. Now get off Sam's lawn.